Sorry, I apologize. My hair's a little messy right now. I have just had a massive morning. Uh, but anyway, Drickus Duplessis will be fighting Sean Strickland this weekend, as we know. And, you know, the, the betting favorite in this fight is Sean Strickland. But I'm thinking that this fight isn't going to be overly competitive here. Now, most Drickus Duplessis fights, they will be a bit competitive because he does chat his way to victory here. But I'm almost certain, and I know this is, it's crazy to be certain about a championship fight, especially with, you know, two fighters like Sean Strickland and Drickus Duplessis, you know, especially since we just seen Sean Strickland go in there and, you know, go pull off one of the greatest upsets of all time over Israel Adesanya. But styles do make fights, and I think in this matchup with Drickus Duplessis and Sean Strickland, I think this fight... I don't want to say Tegler made for Drickus Duplessis, but I feel like this, stylistically, this is such a good matchup for Drickus Duplessis. Now, you're probably wondering, like, yeah, but Strickland's got the cardio advantage. Yeah, he might, but Drick, I don't think Sean Strickland's fought anyone with the pressure that Drickus Duplessis brings. Drickus can be gassed as fuck, and he'll still be coming forward, swinging big shots, uh... Like, he doesn't give up. It's weird. It's weird. He can gas out, but he's one of those fighters that... It's almost like he fights better when he's gassed, except for the Whitaker fight. He wasn't gassed at all in that fight. But it's like... You know in, like, UFC 3, when you'd gas out, you'd sort of, like... Or UFC 4, actually. I think it was UFC 4. When you'd gas out and you'd, like, land a shot, it would actually rock your opponent more. I think it was, like, a perk you could get for it or something like that. It's like, Drickus Duplessis is, like, S-tier gassed rocking ability like he gasses out and he will rock you like he will hurt you more than when he's like not gassed it's like it puts him in like a sort of flow state where he knows like the right shots to throw and everything it's weird i don't know how to properly explain it i haven't really seen it uh from anyone besides drikus duplicy no drikus sorry i think somebody told me off for uh, how the way I was, the way i was pronouncing his name let me just make sure i'm pronouncing this properly Drikus. It's Drikus. Okay, my bad. Drikus Duplessis. So anyway, I think I think Drikus is going to win this fight. Another thing with Sean Strickland, I know that he's got amazing pressure and he did use that pressure on Israel Adesanya, but if you watch any Sean Strickland performance, if he gets pressured back, he sort of frails his arms around. He's not really using the Philly shell. He's not being very smart defensively. He does get hit moving backwards. On the back foot, he's very hittable. Like, he's got great defense, some of the best defense, but the thing is, the way Drix Duplessis strikes is the one flaw that Dr Sean Strickland does have in his striking defense. If he gets hit in the face, it's always moving backwards, and I think Drix Duplessis has the sort of pressuring style, the sort of, you know, he'll throw out uh, offensive wrestling, offensive grappling, he'll throw all sorts of attempts to get Israel Adesanya thinking. And I do think that him using that, Sorry, did I say Israel Adesanya? I meant he used that on Sean Strickland. Jesus Christ. Uh, I think Drickus Duplessis can use those sort of, like, I think he can use his wrestling, his grappling here. Uh, not even just to go in there and just maul Sean Strickland, which I think he could potentially do. Sean Strickland's got some very underrated takedown defense. You know, even against Usman at welterweight, he wasn't getting taken down as much as, like, everybody else was at the time. He was getting back to his feet. He was getting beat up in that fight, but, like, he was getting back to his feet and everything. I feel like Drickus Duplessis is just so freakishly strong that he can put that takedown threat in uh, Sean Strickland's mind. And then moving backwards, I think Sean, I think Sean Strickland's going to get caught on the chin with maybe a left hook. I know I'm saying, oh, you know, but Drickus Duplessis doesn't hit as hard as Alex Bahia and all that. And I understand it, but Drickus does have some crazy power. If you look at the way he KOs people, it's just out of nowhere. Like, even if Sean Strickland's pressuring Drickus Duplessis against the fence... Drickus Duplessis has shown that he can chin people even when they're pressuring him and he's against the fence. You know, Sean Strickland might be in his face, you know, doing the man dance and everything, frailing his arms around, doing the fucking Philly shell and everything like that. But Drickus Duplessis still has that ability to catch him right on the chin and KO him. And I just keep foreseeing in my mind Drickus Duplessis is going to catch Sean Strickland either moving backwards or Sean Strickland's going to come out too aggressive against the fence. And this isn't going to be like an Israel Adesanya who, you know, he's just going to sit there and take it and he's, you know, he's, he's just going to be throwing leg kicks. Drickus Duplessis is going to bring a firefight. This is going to be completely different stylistically. He is not an orthodox striker like Israel Adesanya. He's not going out there to win a leg kick battle. Drickus Duplessis is going out there to finish people and that's what he does best. He is the one of the best finishers in the UFC, honestly. I only went to a decision with Brad Tavares, which is crazy in hindsight to think about all the people he knocked out, but Brad Tavares survives. But I do think 
Drickus Duplicy is going to catch him. I think he will. I think he's going to catch him on the chin. I think he's going to rock him. And I think he's going to land like one of those big hammer fist type shots on Sean Strickland as he's down on the ground. And then I think Drickus Duplicy is going to be champion now. Drikus, sorry, I gotta, I, I gotta get it, I gotta get pronouncing his name properly. I gotta start remembering the future champ's name, Drikus Duplicy. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Sean Strickland. This, I like both of these guys quite a lot. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big fan of both of these guys. I'm a Strickland enjoyer, I'm a Duplicy enjoyer. You know, I like them both. But the thing is, like, we gotta, we really gotta fucking worry about Sean Strickland moving backwards in this fight. Like, even against Israel Asanya, he the one times like Izzy would sort of pressure Sean Strickland, he would sort of just frail his arms up as Izzy was like trying to jab at him. Like, I don't know, it's just a bit worrying. I know it, his style is very awkward anyway. It doesn't look like he should have as good of defense as he does, but it somehow just works for him. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe he'll Philly shell his way to victory, but. I think Drickus Duplicy is going to have a completely different mindset to uh, as an Israel Adesanya, but yeah, I don't know. I think, I think, I just, I know that obviously Drickus Duplicy could probably just go in there and grapple to a victory, but I think he's going to try and prove like a point. Maybe he club and subs Sean Strickland. You know, he's got a very, very good guillotine. Like a lot of people, you know, the guillotine doesn't work, but at middleweight, and they, I guess most of his these wins are at welterweight. Like. Drickus Tuple C does have a fucking hell of a gear to get on him. He almost got Whitaker in it, but Whitaker did escape from it. Like, he's, he's got a very good grip for it. You know, if you just look at fucking Drickus Tuple C, he's built like a fucking brick shit house. This Drickus, Drickus Tuple C, my apologies. You know, Drickus is just built like an absolute brick shit house. He's, he's fucking ripped, right? Like, he's massive. He is a massive middleweight. 6'1, big guy, 76 inch reach, strong as an ox. But yeah, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna either KO an aggressive Sean Strickland, or he's gonna use that pressure and that backwards, you know, that lack of defense on the back foot by Sean Strickland. I think he's gonna brutally KO Sean Strickland. Now maybe. Now I do see a world where maybe Drick is, goes out there a bit too heavy in the first round, you know, like he did against Darren Till. Maybe he goes for takedowns. He's just frying big shot after big shot. I think he landed about like 80 strikes in that first round against Darren Till. Like that is insane when you think about it. And then he was a bit, you know, fatigued. And then he, he sort of had a second win in that third round. But I don't know. I feel like Darren Till probably is like a harder puncher. I mean, yeah, he is a harder puncher than Sean Strickland. Both of them are, uh, you know, both of them guys are uh, sort of decision machines. But I'd say like Darren Till is more of a powerful puncher. But also at the same time, Sean Strickland has a lot more uh, output. So he was gassed like he was against... Darren Till, Sean Strickland's not going to just come out there and throw a few, like, you know, one left hook here, one left hook here, you know, the left straight, the left straight, another left straight, uh, what else does Darren Till do, uh, a left straight, you know, he's not going to do something like that, you know, he's going to have a completely different sort of game plan, if he has a, like, if, if Drikus du, Duplicy is gassed out, and Sean Strickland's f right in front of him, that is worrying, because Sean Strickland's not going to back off like a Darren Till will. He will be just going at uh, Drikus the whole time. He'll be going body. He'll probably even mix a few shots to the body, but he'll mostly just be head hunting. And Drikus, when he does gas out, he does drop his arms quite a lot. So there is like an... I can see a world where Drikus is just gassed against the fence and he's getting teed off on, but I just think you can't have these defensive flaws against someone like uh, Drikus Duplicy. Like we've even seen it with Whitaker. Now I know Whitaker doesn't have the greatest chin in general, but he showed a few flaws in there, and that was just enough for Drikus to really capitalize. And I think, I think Strickland's going to really get badly caught uh, getting pressure in this fight. So I am going to take Drikus Duplicy by KO in this fight, and I'm going to go late first round, early second round. There is one thing you'll notice with Drikus. He is a bit of a slow starter at times. Now, against Darren Till, he definitely wasn't. He has been picking it up quite a lot. You know, I'd say it was his first two... Uh, first three fights, actually, you know, the Marcus Perez fight, he was very slow in that fight. I know he got a first round KO, but he did start very slow. The Trevin Giles fight, he did start a bit slow. Second round, just boom, out of nowhere. Plot armor. That's another thing we've got to factor in here for Drikus. He has plot armor and a half. He can be down, but it doesn't serve the plot. The plot always needs Drikus Duplicy to win, so, you know, he's got that plot armor right there. Even against... Even against Derek Brunson, he was a bit of a slow starter. So there is this thing with Drikus where he is just a bit of a slow starter, but he has been picking it up lately. Uh, 
I don't know. It's hard to know which Drikus is going to show up. At the end of the day, he always shows up, but like it depends if he's going to be the fast starter or slow starter. I feel like in a five rounder, it probably benefits him a bit to be a bit of a slow starter. He doesn't want to go out there and blow his load and then have four rounds left against a, a cardio pressure machine like Sean Strickland. But yeah, I, I'm going to take Drikus Duplessis here. I do think he's going to get this one done by brutal KO. I think we're going to be looking at the first South African champion. And I think his name, you know, the champion will have a name and it will be Drikus Duplessis. But hey, if Sean Strickland wins, I'm not going to be too mad about that. You know, Drik uh, Sean Strickland as champion has been amazing. I love just seeing all the headlines. It's so funny to see that this guy is the UFC champion. Like, he's a UFC <laughs> PR machine nightmare. So I'm not too, I'm not mad about that at all by any means. But uh, yeah, I do think, I do think uh, Drikus is going to get this one done. I think he's going to bring that belt back to South Africa. And... Yeah, I'm excited for this fight, though. The fight's going to be crazy. Sean Strickland's purchased a fucking knife with Nina Drama, so let's just hope this fight happens. Let's hope that Sean Strickland doesn't get arrested. Uh, I don't I don't think that will happen. I, I mean, surely fucking not. Like, Jesus Christ. I hope not. As much as I like making videos about popular topics, I wouldn't really like to make a video. So, UFC 297, we have a new main event because Sean Strickland's just gone to prison for attempted murder against Drikus Duplessis. We now have Raquel Pennington versus Mayra Buno Silva as a main event. Like, I don't want to make a video on that. So, Sean Strickland, please just don't stab him. I'm sure he's learned from his... You know, he's not gonna he's not going to go that dark again, I don't think. But, uh... Yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on a little bit here, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a like. Uh, if you Give me your thoughts on this potential matchup as well. How are you going with this? How do you think Drikus gets this one done? Or are you going with Strickland? Are you going for a majority draw? Because who fucking knows at this point. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, put on notifications. I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio. Adios. Toodle pip. Goodbye. See ya. I think that's it. Uh, Bonjour. Goodbye. Actually, is that good morning? I don't even know. Goodbye.